So, pause for a second so you can get that sorted in your mind and settled out. So, what are these analyses going to look like? We say we're looking at flow duration, we're looking at flooding, we want what what are the results are going to look like? So talking about the models, the computer models, continuous simulation, is we can look at not only flow duration, but we can look at flooding. Um, annual flood peaks, just like stream flow. Um, we get the stream flow, we do flood analysis on, on the stream flow, we get how big are the floods? 200 year, 100 year, 2 year floods. And then we calibrate our models to those numbers. So our models are calibrated to actual stream flow. So that's fairly good calibration. Looking at that one was, uh, uh, I remember it, that was about 36 years of data, of uh, field data uh, from the stream. We had the corresponding data from the climate uh, climate records, and so we ran our model for 36 years and did a, did a comparison between what's in the stream and what does the model predict, and we matched it. So that was pre-development conditions. And then we can do start looking doing at the comparisons that the DFO and, and the other jurisdictions are looking for. What's the pre-development? What's the post-development happening? So you see the post-development. Most of all, that discharge is going from, uh, well, the 100 year going from about 16 to, what is it, 40 something? So development really pushes the peak discharge it up. Um, our our post development with our, with our PMPs in place won't increase the big floods. Uh, we can manage a little bit smaller floods. We can manage that. But that, just, that, that addresses the flooding. So that addresses one of our concerns. Uh, the next in turn was flow duration. And here it was, the Melanie, it's, it's the discharge, water needs time. And you see the blue line is the pre-development flows, the discharge duration. Uh, the red was post-development, just let it happen. And in order to bring the flooding down, and to manage the, the water in a way that we can match the flow balance, sending the water back to deep groundwater through interflow, through runoff, and get a little to try and get some infiltration or evaporation back. But primarily it's managing the lost evaporation and managing the excess surface flow. What do we do with that? So we're trying to manage that in a way that doesn't overwhelm the, the, the aquifers. So we're letting that, uh, it's really we're emphasizing the inner flow system. And we're managing the inner flow system. And, okay, so it's really simple to do if you do the continuous model. You get lots of information back there. So how is it implemented? 